Well, we always say on UFC Fight Pass, you can see the future stars today. And I got to go back a couple of years ago uh, to tell you about a story about my next guest. His name is Malcolm Wellmaker, and a lot of people know the man from Dana White's Contender Series, which, by the way, if you're not watching on Tuesday nights, I don't know what to tell you. You're just <laughs> a combat sports fan. But if you are watching, you know exactly who this man is. But Malcolm, I think it was August of 2022. Yeah. Something like that. I yeah. saw you in, in Savannah, Georgia. You literally sprayed Pearl Gonzalez in the blood of your opponent. <laughs> yeah, uh, I got blood on a dress. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that was that was a great night, and uh, I'm sure it was trumped by the night that you had last Tuesday in yeah. Las Vegas. How's life been since uh, taking the world by storm and impressing the heck out of Dana White? Man, I'm I'm still on cloud nine, man. I ain't, I ain't came down yet, you know. Um, everybody, everybody in the city, man, has just showed me so much love. Everybody around me is so proud, you know. Everybody I'm sharing the mats with now has like this fire up under them. You know, everything's different. Um, everything's better, man. It's it's fantastic. I'm happy as could be. Yeah, I mean, Daniel Cormier was professing his love for you yeah. in the, uh, you know, what you did in the in the fight. Let, let's talk about your fighting style because this is something that, uh, again, I mentioned. You know, I called one of your your two of your previous fights prior yeah. to getting into the contender series, and uh, I remember one of the point of emphasis that we were talking about in your early fights and still on display today is your composure. You seem so calm, cool, collected. And, you know, let alone feeling that way in a fight, that's one thing. But to do it and still feel comfortable on this big stage in front of Dana White, you know, Sean Shelby, Mick Maynard, the world is watching. What is it about this fight atmosphere that you just find yourself to be right at home in? I don't know, man. Uh, You know, I I feel like all of us as uh, athletes and fighters, you know, have different gifts, you know, and one that I had for some reason was just, you know, whenever I'm on these big stages and I'm fighting on, you know, in front of Jorge Masvidal or Dana White, right. you know, in the biggest fight of my life, I don't I don't really pay attention to it. You know, I'm just focused on the task at hand. I'm just ready to fight. And, you know, fortunately, it proved to still be true when I was on, you know, uh, the, the stage in front of Dana White, man. So, yeah, I don't know. You know, when I see you compete, Malcolm, it's apparent that you're not afraid to do what you're doing. And that's bite down to the yeah. mouthpiece and maybe take one to give one. Uh, it, it tends to be that uh, fighters don't come back after you give them a couple more <laughs> than they give you. Uh, you know, Talk about your striking style because, you know, I, I mentioned Daniel Cormier's fascination with your ability to, to land the punch that you did that ended the fight. It, it seems like you're comfortable, whether it's, you know, southpaw, orthodox, from any angle, it seems like you can bring power that is just that fight ending power. Yeah, man. Um, from the very beginning, when I first started training, the guys that I admired the most was the guys that was knocking people out. You know, so like I, I watched a lot of Connor. Um, I watched a lot of Canelo too, Javante Davis. Like I studied the way they worked the bag. You know, I, I even convinced my coach to buy like one of the big power shields I will always see Canelo uh, using, and he bought one just to help me. You know, develop power. And um, I think I centered my whole striking style, my whole, you know, setup game, all the traps I use off of trying to land knockout punches. Um, That's just been my goal from the get-go. It's what I've admired, and it's what has gotten me to where I am today. So I I do tend to take some risks, but usually I I like to think it's it's a low-risk and high-reward situation most of the time. You know, the fight we saw, the contender series, it was a one-hitter-quitter type of thing. The the, the night in Savannah, Georgia, same sort of thing, walk-off sort of knockout. What does it feel like when you land your best shot and guys go down? Do you know instantly, like, okay, that that one's a, a coffin nail? Yeah, most of them, yeah. Some of them I don't, but most of them, man, I, I, I have it in my heart and soul. Like, when I land this one, I'm going to send them to meet his maker. You know what I mean? And, right. and that was that's what that shot was. That's why when I landed it, man, and, and I just I felt the impact. I knew his body was going limp. After I landed it, man, it was it's it's such a satisfying feeling, man. And I knew everything that was going to come with it. Yeah. You know, uh, there's a lot that comes with it now. You know, UFC debut going to be, uh, you know, on the horizon. Oh, yeah. Has that has that settled in yet? Have you realized like what your future is going to hold now, Malcolm? It's it's starting to because it's actually scary. You know, I, I've talked to a couple of different people and, you know, they'll just start tossing out names in casual conversation. But it's guys that, like, I'm fans of, you know what I mean? But they're they're legitimately, you know, parts of my potential career path. 
And that's when it becomes really real. Uh, so it is starting to settle in. Um, and I think it's going to get even more real when, when the phone rings and I have a date and I have a place to be and I know it's going to be in the UFC. It's going to be in Venom, you know, uh, shorts. It's not going to be a contender right. series fight. Um, it's very, very scary, but it's very exciting, man. I'm, I'm living in a whole nother realm right now. I mean, that's what you're here for. You're here to, you know, shine on the biggest stage and, uh, that, that door is going to open for you in the not so distant future. I, I'm curious, Malcolm, I don't want you to like necessarily call out, you know, fighters or anything like that, obviously baby steps, but where do you see yourself and your skills matching up with the upper echelon of the division? Do you see anybody in the UFC that is similar to you? Do you, do you liken your style uh, to, to anybody, you know, specifically? Yeah. You know, it's, it's so funny, man. Uh, I, Cause I don't want this to be taken the wrong way. And I highly doubt he even sees it. Um, but I watched him fight on Dana White's contender series last year. And I watched him, you know, blaze through his first few fights, and he's making a name. And um, I've, in interviews before my Dana, Dana White Contender Series fight, and even now, um, it's people that, you know, I talk to, whether it's in the gym or just, you know, fans or fr- friends of, you know, the sport. And Peyton Talbot, man, he's a, he's a dude that I, I really like his style, man. He's a super-duper confident guy with hands of stone, Um I think it's even fair to say we look similar. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and uh, I think that that's a dude that, you know, when I watch him fight, before I got my shot, it was a whole year, and I watched him do his thing, and I was like, I know I can do everything he's doing. You know, you put me in the cage with the guys he's getting put in there with, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Um, so I feel like everything that he's doing as a prospect, you know, coming up and getting these knockouts against, you know, more and more challenging fighters, um, I'm very capable of doing. And I think you give me – a year, maybe maybe two years or less. You know, I'm 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 trying to get it right next to my name, and I'm trying to be put into these talks with you know title contention. And and I'm sure if Peyton Talbot is seeing this, he probably takes that as a compliment, as as he should. Uh, you know, he he's a rising star. You yourself are very much a rising star coming up uh, off that same contender series. Uh, it, it's interesting to sort of wonder what could be next. And I'm sure all your friends and family, like you said, are throwing out names. But I want to talk about your friends and family a little bit because, you know, Augusta, Georgia, on the video feed, on the Contender Series, uh, they were going crazy on demand. What has it been like since you've gotten home and and talked with, uh, you know, some of your uh, stronger supporters? Man, you know, talking about the stream, you know, it did no justice. If I've seen so many, like, videos of people who had their phone in the place and right. they were screaming so loud, like the waitresses were like holding their ears. <laughs> people were standing on tables, like jumping all over the place. That place was at absolute capacity. Like it was no more sitting room. People were standing up watching the fight. Um, and it, it it made me so happy. Like I almost wished I could be there, you know, to, to feel the energy and support. Um, yeah, Augusta, you know, the, I, I take so much pride in Augusta because, you know, I'm born and raised here and, and I'm as, you know, as a... Uh, as much of Augusta as you can get. Like I did, I never took a lot of vacations. Most of the places I go off fight trips, you know, all my family's here. Everything I know is here. Um, for a long time, I stayed in the South side of Richmond County. I didn't even come to like Columbia County. You know what I mean? Like I'm as Augusta as it gets. So when I came home and, you know, I saw all these supporters surprise me at the airport and, and I see that they, they're, they're feeling me when I say I did this for Augusta and they, they celebrating the victory. Like it's their own it means so much more because I, I know that, you know, these kids and, and these teammates and my friends and family are literally going to sleep with smiles on their faces, you know, and I, one of my teammates' mom, Quincy's mom, she took the next day off work and called it like, she called it uh, like Malcolm UFC day. Like it, it was, it was crazy, man. It's just, it's unreal, man. And, and it, it makes it so much sweeter when everybody loves it as much as I do. It's interesting because it is an individual sport. There's no other sport where you can only win or lose based on you and yourself. There, there's, I mean, yes, it's a team sport, but, you know, on fight night, it's just you. But like you said, you represent so much. You bring those people with you, you know, spiritually, emotionally. And yeah. do, do you like that? Do you like being uh, a, a role model for maybe the next generation or just your community and team? I love it. Um, you know, as I... I, I grew up and I didn't, you know, my father passed away from cancer when I was really young. So I, d- I didn't really have a father figure in my life. You know, I found myself uh, in a lot of situations um, without guidance. A lot of people that was like, you know, teachers and 
and stuff like that. I was I was uh, I was misunderstood a lot. And and one thing I never had was somebody or I feel like I, I could have really used was somebody that was older than me, listening to me and, and helping guide me um, through a lot of those things I was going through. So it's a lot of guys in the gym. It's a lot of guys outside the gym. It's a lot of people I, I meet in the workplace, you know, younger guys that they they're drawn towards me and I can tell they care when I listen to them. I can I can tell they care when I spend that little bit of time, you know, uh telling them my thoughts and how I feel like I could I could help guide them. And um it brings me a level of fulfillment uh that means more than just going in there and winning for myself. So I love being that. I, I try to be the best role model and and a leader I can be to to help inspire as many people as I can behind me. Well, they've had eyes on you for a long time, as have uh, anybody that watches the future uh, stars shine today on UFC Fight Pass like you have uh, in the past. And, and now it's on to the, the big octagon. The UFC is going to be calling the name Malcolm Wellmaker before too long. And uh, Malcolm, we got to get you back on here to talk about the official UFC debut when it comes, because, uh, you know, I've enjoyed getting to know you and the, the various uh, points that we've uh, crossed paths. And uh, you're must see TV at this point, man. And uh, <laughs> I, I can't wait to see it happen uh, for you in, in the UFC's octagon. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, like you said, bro, you you met me when I was a one and pro, and yeah. uh, bro, you and Pearl showed me so much love, man. And uh, I, I'm very very appreciative of that. So it's really nice to be at this point, eight and and finally be signed and checking back in with you. So whenever we get signed, let's set it back up and let's do it again, man. There we go, Malcolm. Appreciate the time, sir. Best of luck moving forward. Thank you very much, man. Talk to you soon.